Hey guys, today we are here to show you how to pack a D-bag using my Just Acro D-bag. Tomorrow I'm going to have a show jump, so I have to be ready to get out from the helicopter. There are many different ways to pack a D-bag. I'm going to show you the most simple and the easiest way, which I'm using for eight years now and never had any serious problems. A little tip cravat or a knot is, is normal, is calculated, but this is always something you can, you should be able to solve with the altitude, doing a full stall or uh, pulling on your stabilo line and so on. So let's get going. This is a Just Acro D bag from the side that's always pointing to the pilot. The other side is pointing away from the pilot. We got these leaves, four leaves. And this is exactly the way how you should put it on the ground when you start packing. So the leaves with the many rubbers are on the bottom. Also note that all these hookup points are on the bottom. I rubbered it all up, it's a brand new D-bag. And up here, there's the main rubber, which is a really strong one, that is going to close the D-bag inside. There's a lot of te tension on this rubber, so make sure that this is really strong. If you are using one of these rubbers, make sure that there is no damage or no cut that could weaken up the rubber, because this can be a really problem if this rubber breaks before all the lines left the D-bag at the deployment. The first step is prepare the glider on top of the D-bag, downwards. Of course, you have to be 100% sure that the lines are as clean as possible. You don't want to pack any knots in, at least not like this. So you're going to sort out the lines and connect them to the harness perfectly. It's important to have the harness fixed to something so you can really tension the lines all the time. You can either fix the, the leg straps to something or have a fan sit on the, the harness or put a weight on it this is about 10 kilograms, so you can, during the pack job, really tension the lines without the, the harness slipping upwards. Let me introduce my assistant, Florian. He's going to help me with this pack job. So, thank you. To collect the glider into a small rosette, just above the D-bag. To do so, we separate the lines, one hand to one side, separating A, B, C, D with the fingers and exactly the same way on the opposite side and my assistant is going to walk to the glider with the lines separated okay He's gonna collect all the lines and then he's gonna collect the glider into a small rosette. And he needs to lift the entire glider up into the air. So you have to walk to the front, walk to the front until you're able to lift the whole glider up into the air. Okay, so my assistant is holding the, the glider up into the air and I pull out the entire trailing edge. I wanna make sure that all the lines are going to the inside and that all the trailing edge is pulled out nicely. Also the other side. D 
this way I also prepare the next step which is going to be inside here can you please hold it up higher so I just want to make sure that all the material is down in between the line attachment points it has to be all down so all the stuff you see here it has to be down 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 in between all the way to the trailing edge all the way to the back you know this is just some cosmetics most of the steps we're doing just cosmetics it doesn't really make the opening any better but at least it feels like better You want to make sure that all these lines behind the assistant are under tension. So right now they are hanging down, which is not so good. So I try to put them more under tension. So look, now they are good. This side I corrected. So now he can really squeeze it so it doesn't change a lot. And also do the same here. Okay, so now look, all the lines are under tension, more or less. And now we put, we put the glider down on the D-bag. As I said, the main rubber is on the top. The lots of rubbers and the hookup points on the bottom. And try to put them down more to the front so the lines stay under tension. And at the glider, as you can see now, there is a big bend because he's holding it, but it has to be straight when it comes down to the D-bag. Okay, and now I take already the first leading edge, a little bit more up, okay, and start collecting. The leading edge. Come a little closer, please. So this glider has rigid foil plastic things in it. It's it's rigid, and basically this entire leading edge part is rigid, which makes it a little more difficult to pack because it needs more. It's kind of a bigger packing volume. You cannot bend these, and you don't really want to bend these. So pretty much half of the D bag is going to be reserved for the leading gauge, maybe two, two thirds of the D-bag and the rest for all the rest. As you can see, I'm having the middle a little bit further up because this is pretty much the, the way you would naturally have the glider if you squeeze it to the, like together. See, my assistant is still holding the lines that they are not getting too messy. They're gonna get messy anyway. And as you can see, the stabilos are on top of everything, which is not good. You want to have it also on the side. Uh, and to do so, the best if you do kind of a, a like this under rolling motion with your hands, try to do them symmetrically. So you pretty much want to do this and squeeze the middle a little bit and get the, 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 the tips out a little bit. We are going to close the D-bag now. Okay. A really important point here to check. You cannot have any lines going behind the stay below. This is gonna make you a big cravat. So you have to make sure you have to control it, not only now, but a little bit later on during the packing, that the, the, all the lines going to the inside and there's nothing going behind the stabilo. I'm going to close the D-bag now. So you take two, these two leaves. That's why we already squeezed the, 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 the glider a little bit. 
you can take them in between your legs so it helps not to pull it apart and you just gently push these parts down and fix the velcro make sure that there's nothing in between the velcro so there's no lines no no material of the glider get caught in between the velcro that's it at this stage it's important to control again the entire trailing gauge and it also is gonna make it easier to stuff it in afterwards so what I like to do is pulling out the middle it's easy for me because I know it's at the red blue sign so this is the middle and make sure that all the lines are going to the inside and I pack it like kind of the way you pack the glider after landing make sure everything is going to the inside don't worry if it's messy don't try to make it right just leave it the way it is that's it you see line attachment point over line attachment point and the materials coming outside that's it same on the other side Okay, now he can let go the lines, actually even before he was kind to, to kneel for so long, but now it's okay. As you can see, this looks a little bit messy, it is messy, but it's better to leave it like this than trying to, you know, oh, how, what belongs to where, whatever, just leave it, just leave it, don't worry about it. Here's my second assistant the chef of Alpenjuvel, the hotel we are staying at. This is Alex. Thank you for your time Hi. and your help. So he's going to kneel down here and pretty much just holding a little bit against here because we're going to stuff all the rest inside. So you don't want the, the leading gauge to leave on the top. So just make sure that you're not pressing, but just holding here again. So you just wanna block the, the opening of the D-bag with this part like that. You also have to make sure that this flap where all the rubbers are on, that this is really stretched out. You don't want to pack it inside the bag, so you want to make sure that this is nice and open. And then, <clears throat> now we have to stuff all this remaining inside the bag, which is a challenge. To do so, you have to have all the air out so you have to really press it together and we are going to enter at the same level and search our fingers in the in the middle so so we're gonna touch our fingers in the middle and with our thumb really press it and not just stuff it in but we roll it in so you want to have a kind of s figures inside of the d-bag so you want to grab it and roll it and then push it up so again squeeze it grab it roll it and then push it as high as possible and don't let it go until you made sure that both of you reach the maximum height the maximum uh, squeezability so now we search our finger underneath at whatever 15 centimeters down and squeeze with my with our thumbs and now make sure that the air is also like this part you're gonna squeeze in that it's pressed out because if there's air inside it's not really gonna work here. okay now it's good so now we hold with the other hand up here and it also helps a lot if just before doing the, the motion you press down here because it makes a kick in here where you want to fold and now you you roll it open up the the mouth of the d-bag and now you're squeezing upwards now wait a second 
the, the lines are all under tension now so we have to move a little bit downwards towards the harness just a little bit we're gonna move a little bit down so now we can squeeze again more just make sure don't let it go don't let it go before you reach the highest point okay okay, okay. now really carefully get your hand out there make sure you are not messing it up super nice and now squeeze the air again Make sure again that the flap underneath is out. I have to I have to pull it out again. So, same procedure. Lift the lift the, the mouth of the bag, push it so you break you kick it. And now move towards the harness a bit. And now squeeze it. This is a 17 square meter, so by doing it two times, you should be able to have most of it inside, and the rest is gonna be just a little bit. I like to come with the rest a little bit closer, and then just, you know, just put it in. Okay. Now we're gonna close it up. To do so, you gotta separate the two parts. So they are separated, separated. Like this. So I close it here. Close it through the main rubbers. And now you come with both sides symmetrically. And close it up. Don't make it don't make it too tight. I mean here, don't make it too tight because you have to you have to put this underneath it. And if it's too tight, you are not going to be able to Okay, so now we hide it all the mess, now comes the more beautiful part. <laughs> these and these should normally be at the same height. I think it has something to do because at the risers, as you look at this, these are not symmetric. These are not symmetric either, so this is this is a mistake, you should be actually making sure that these are symmetric. If somebody is sitting in a harness, then uh, ask this person to hold them together, so your lines are more symmetric. But this is not a base jump, this is not a base canopy, so symmetricity is not gonna play uh, such a big role. The rotor of the helicopter, when I exit, is gonna play a little bit a bigger role. In the, in the opening sequence. Grab the D-bag. Can you let it go please? And, and make a nice round. Make sure you don't turn it around, but you put it back down at the same direction. So this way, uh, you have the lines loose and you can, you can uh, fix them up. There are different methods to, to put the lines up. I'm going to show my preferred method, um, which is pretty simple. We s I start on the very top and just go step by step, put them in. Because I have a lot of space and lots of rubbers, I don't need to take each one of them, so I just take every second one. This, this way, I also keep them a little bit more separate from each other. These rubbers are really, really strong, but they can break, probably you're going to break one or two in each opening. 
so you have to replace them of course. You can do this with your friend together, makes it maybe nicer, but you can do it also alone. You know, having it perfectly, beautifully nice is not gonna make it open nicer. So, of course, if it's ugly, it's not nice, but This is totally all right. Okay, now we come to the point where we have to do something because at the end I don't want to have my risers hanging all over the place. So I want to have my lines, the line attachment points up in the D-bag or not in the D-bag but very uh, much on the top of it so it's not disturbing it's not in my way it cannot entangle anywhere so what i do is separate the lines again i think i will need one more one more uh, loop here to have the right length Okay, so separate them. And now, I put the D-bag a little closer. <clears throat> and fix this remaining into one loop and pull it up all the way to the riser as you can see <clears throat> all the lines are up here I put a little bit too much and it left here okay one side is ready now the other side you go again from up here pull it all the way up to the risers and now I take one of the free rubbers put them together and fix them fairly strong at least double here and put it down so this way you can make sure that the risers are not gonna be, you know, swimming around the whole place but they're gonna be staying where they belong to up there at the same time you can always, before the jump, pull the, the brake line out to, to have some freedom, for example, when you stand at the just before the exit, you stand in the door of the helicopter and you want to hold on to something, you can still have your your break in your hand okay the lines are ready now we have to open the d-bag again make sure that the stabilizers are nice and clean and still at the place where they belong to and then we're gonna close to cover all this mess up it's the best to do it with your partner so very carefully you open the velcro in the inside make sure that you do as less movement inside as possible and now look at this you can see this is the rest we squeezed in this is the leading edge you can make sure again that the stabilizer this is a pretty important part you want to make sure that the stabilizer is really out out and there are no lines no cravats built in there was a cravat built in here i can tell you that let's have a look at the other side also so you just want to make sure from here to follow, follow, follow 
Okay, that was no cravat here. This was good. The stabilizer is free. This is nice. So you just want to leave it on the side and pretty much close back again. You want to press here a little bit. It's good to um, apply the same amount of pressure from both sides. So it's good to do it uh, together with help and not alone because otherwise you're going to have an asymmetric uh, shape. You can just do it roughly in the for the first try, like this is a rough try, and now you can go again from one side just to make sure that it's nicely done. And there, of course, there is nothing here. Like you, you don't want to close any lines inside here. Okay. So we are pretty much done. You can make it a little bit nicer by pushing the leaves in here together. So also by this there's going to be less tension on the, the main rubber closing these two leaves. And especially this mess you want to put it inside of it. So it's not, as you can see it's coming out from here, no problem. It's better to have it on the top a little bit out and having the bottom all disappear and then you grab with one hand in the middle and make sure that there is nothing uh, the lines are not coming out and move up this is the position you want to jump from as you remember and we laid out the glider and it was facing up the debug was like this the glider flying this direction so this is the correct position you want to have the glider or the d-bag when you jump out now i put it down to the ground to show you some more things if you're going to jump from a tandem or hot air balloon or anything else where you have to hang yourself up then you want to use these two rings on the side symmetrically connecting the releaser from the carabiner to this ring on each side. There is also one in the middle if you want to use only one for any reason then you can hang yourself in the middle one. These, this strap here up here you find two loops one is to hang the d-bag up is the hookup of the, the the whole thing and the rest with the velcro is safety. Tomorrow I'm not going to use it or need it because I'm going to jump out from a helicopter that's different but let's say you jump from a hotel balloon and for the time being you're climbing up and you're not high enough to perform a safe jump you want to make sure that you are safe and you're not gonna unintentionally fall out of the sky so you want to have this fixed to the carabiner on each side this way you're gonna be safe. Once you reach the, the exit altitude or just before, <clears throat> as a first, first step of your preparation for the jump, you remove the carabiner and fix it in the middle, in this little loop. And the rest, the Velcro, as high as you can reach, you fix it up here, so it's not hanging down here and uh, does not gonna make any malfunction in the opening. For tomorrow, for my jump, I'm going to use these carabiners for another reason. Because I'm going to have a jump master sitting in the helicopter, probably Florian, and he's going to to hold the D bag with his bare arms like this, or as he prefers. He can use this strap to have maybe a better grab. You don't want to be connected to the helicopter itself any, in any way. So you just want to have a person who holds it. And if whatever happens, just drop it. You have the reserves to use. 
so you don't want a helicopter to to crash because of your crazy activities to store the d-bag you just simply put the nice package in here and you're good to go I prefer not to use a speed bar any kind for the back jump because you don't have it there, eh? I don't want anything to hang around here yeah, that could uh, possibly entangle in yeah. anything so that was it I hope you like it guys and you're gonna have lots of fun debugging you are more than welcome to buy just a crew debug from my website and in another tutorial I'm going to show you how to properly set up the three ring releaser systems so that was it for now cheers guys